As we prepare to drop a new load of restrictions on the 19th of July, the Tory government has been giving out a lot of mixed messages. This is no more the case. And on the question of masks, this was Community Secretary Robert Jenrick on Sky News on the 4th of July, when he was asked if he would be dumping his mask on the 19th of July. Well, like many people, I want to uh, get away from these restrictions as quickly as I possibly can. And we don't want them to stay in place for a day longer than is necessary. We are going to, I think, now move into a period where there won't be legal restrictions. The state won't be telling you what to do, but you will want to exercise a degree of personal responsibility and judgment. So different people will come to different conclusions on things like masks, for example, and the Prime Minister will set out more detail on the, the national policy on some of those restrictions in the coming days. So that was just a week ago. The following day, Boris Johnson laid out plans for July the 19th. They scrapped mask mandates in any and all settings. Now, during that week, I think probably most shockingly, actually, government spokespeople were asked, so what if businesses want to introduce a, a mask mandate if they say you can't come into the supermarket without a mask if Tesco or the London Underground decided that? And they said, oh, well, they'll have to check if that's consistent with equalities law, you know, to suggest that actually um, the government is not going to protect any institutions from introducing their own mask mandates unless it discriminates against people who don't want to wear masks. Right. So it was really an incredibly irresponsible policy, also completely nonsensical to say, oh, you should just take, you know, you should make your own judgment about the, the personal risk you are willing to take. That's ridiculous, because as we've been told throughout this pandemic, you wear a mask not to protect yourself, but to protect other people around you. So the idea that you'd make a personal risk assessment doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It was a stupid policy. Thankfully, then. It seems there has been a bit of a U-turn on this front. Seven days after Jenrick said masks are just a personal choice, the vaccines minister, Nadim Zahawi, went on Sky News to say this. The guidelines that we'll set out tomorrow will demonstrate that, including guidelines that people are, are expected to wear masks in um, indoor enclosed spaces um, uh, and, of course, to remain vigilant with, you know, hands and, and face and... and uh, to just remember that if we all act responsibly, as we did with the vaccination program, the nation came together to vaccinate 80,000 vaccinated volunteers who came okay. forward retire, out of retirement and, and to vaccinate. We can come together and deal with this uh, uh, pandemic in a way okay. that is responsible by, by thinking about our own actions and how they impact other people, including, of course, people who are maybe immunocompromised. Now, that message from Nadim Zahawi is much better than the one from Robert Jenrick, right? It happens to be the complete opposite of what he said, but you know the government have clearly got to a slightly better position. They're saying you should wear a mask for other people. They completely abandoned this idea that it's based on individual risk and the risks you are willing to take as an individual. He's also brought up immuno, immunosuppressed people, people whose vaccines might not have been that effective because their immune systems don't function um, as as well as, as as one would hope, right? That's sensible what's being said there. So what prompted this change? It's an interesting question. It could be scientific advice. Often when the government have changed policy throughout this pandemic, they've said, oh, the science have changed. The science has changed. The problem there, the science hasn't changed here. They've been saying the same thing the whole time, which is that you need to wear a mask to protect people around you. And also the idea of getting rid of mandatory masks on the 19th of July is ridiculous. This, this was never a policy which was endorsed by scientists, as you saw actually in press conferences last week, where Chris Whitty and Patrick Vallance stood next to Boris Johnson and said they'll still be wearing masks in, in public places, in indoor public places. What then does explain the shift? Now, it might not come as a surprise to you that it seems to be that the Tories got cold feet when they found out the public weren't particularly keen on the policies they'd just put forward. Essentially, they were worried it was going to damage them electorally. I want to show you some interesting polling, which I think essentially explains this change of tune. It's from YouGov. Um, they asked members of the public whether they thought face masks should continue to be mandatory on public transport after the 19th of July. 71% said yes, they agreed it should be mandatory. Only 21% thought it should no longer continue to be mandatory. So the Tories 
by saying that all of all, all of these um, mask mandates will end. They found themselves radically out of step with the public. We can also see here in shops. So when it comes to shops, 66% of the public thought that masks should continue to be mandatory in shops. Only 27% thought that should be dropped, that masks should not be mandatory in shops. Worth saying, actually, the government is still out of step with, with the majority of the public here because they're still saying it's voluntary. They're now encouraging it instead of saying, oh, it's up to you. But what the public want and what the scientists essentially want as well is to say, look, let's just let's just keep masks in, in places such as the tube and in places such as shops. There's literally no reason to get rid of them whatsoever. I think personally it's going to reduce freedoms if you have people not wearing masks in shops because they'll say, no, we can't have government putting down the laying down these diktats because people need to be able to make their own choices. I think what's obviously the case here is that forcing people to wear masks on the tube really really you know it's not a meaningful freedom to be able to not wear a mask on the tube i mean it's slight I'm, i don't want to downplay it it's a slightly meaningful freedom to be able to go on the tube and not wear a mask but more important is to be able to go on the tube and not worry about getting covid19 because someone is not wearing a mask right so i think net freedoms definitely increased by people wearing masks on tubes the government didn't think so they seem to be coming round to that but only um, because the public disagreed. For me, this has real echoes of you know, the whole, I mean, the shit show, essentially, which was the government's herd immunity policy. They said, look, the sensible thing to do here is to let everyone get the disease, to let it run riot. It turned out the public didn't like that. Exactly the same things happened here. What Sajid Javid wanted to do is say, I'm now the health secretary for Tory backbenchers. That means I'm going to get the public used to COVID-19. We're going to have a policy where we let it run riot so that we can move on. The public have spoken they unsurprisingly don't want that.